For those of you that have some trouble standing, this is a longer gospel lesson, and the important thing is that you receive the gospel. So if you do need to sit down, please, uh, by all means. The Holy Gospel according to St. Luke, the 15th chapter. Now the tax collectors and sinners were all drawing near to him, and the Pharisees and the scribes murmured, saying, This man receives sinners and eats with them. So he told them this parable. There was a man who had two sons, and the younger of them said to his father, Give me the share of the property that falls to me. And he divided his living among them. Not many days later, the younger son gathered all he had, took to, all he had and took his journey into a far country, and there he squandered his property in loose living. And when he had spent everything, a great famine arose in that country, and he began to be in want. So he went and joined himself to one of the citizens of that country, who sent him into his fields to feed, to feed swine. And we, he would gladly have fed on the pods that the swine ate, and no one gave him anything. But when he came to himself, he said, How many of my father's hired servants have bread enough to spare, but I perish here with hunger? I will arise and go to my father. And I will say to him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and, uh, and before you. I am no long, longer worthy to be called your son. Treat me as one of your hired servants. And he arose and came to his father. But while he was yet at a distance, his father saw him and had compassion and ran and embraced him and kissed him. And the son said to him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and before you. I am no longer to, worthy to be able to be called your son. But the father said to his servants, Bring quickly the best robe, and put it on him, and put a ring on his hand, and shoes on his feet, and bring the fatted calf and kill it, and let us eat and make merry, for this my son was dead and is alive again. He was lost and is found. And they began to make merry. Now the elder son was in the field, and as he came and drew near to the house, he heard music and dancing. He called one of the servants and asked what this, what this meant. And he said to him, Your brother has come, and your father has killed the fatted calf, because he has received him safe and sound. But he was angry and refused to go in. His father came out and entreated him and uh, but he answered his father, Lo, these many years as I have served you, I never disobeyed your command. Yet you never gave me a kid that I might make, make marry with my friends. But when the son of yours came, who has devoured your living with harlots, and killed, you killed for him the fatted calf. And he said to him, Son, you are always with me, and all that is mine is yours. It was fitting to make merry and be glad. For this your brother was dead and is alive. He was lost and is found. This is the gospel of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, your grace is uncomprehendable. It is that way because it is undeserved. Our sin is what drives us here today in the name of your Son and for his forgiveness, for his work on our behalf that is undeserved and makes it gracious and merciful. We can breathe easier now hearing that uh, your body and your blood of your Son has been given for us. We pray now through the gift of that means of grace that you might open our ears and our hearts uh, and our minds to the gift of uh, this hearing of your gospel that through it we might hear your will for us, and through your Spirit give us strength to do your will in the world. We do ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Please be seated. So, uh, anybody ever have to come home to, uh, to mom or dad's wrath when you came home from school, and you knew it was coming? Because the community was small enough that they heard about what you did at school or on the bus, and you just knew it was coming. 
I have to admit I was no different than anybody else. I had a few of those moments growing up. Um, one, uh, one time I had a fight on the bus with uh, one of my friends uh, from up the street. Uh, yeah, I didn't always wear the collar, Stella. I, I saw the surprise look in your eyes. And I, yes, I, I did. I got in a fight on the bus. And uh, I knew Dad had heard about it because the principal had called me into the office. And you, you know where that's going. Um, so I had rehearsed it over and over and over and over again. Oh, I knew what I was going to say to Dad. I, I had it down to a science. Um, and you know how that goes, right? You're pointing the finger at the other person saying, look what they did to deserve this. I, I, and and I, I pulled it off just, you know, just the way I rehearsed it. Oh, uh, no, Dad didn't buy it. No, not for a second did he buy it. Um, you got in a fight, especially with a girl on the bus, and you just disgraced his name, not just yours. And Yeah, it was a girl. Oh, goodness me. And she, uh, honestly, she kicked my hind. I've got to tell you. It was, it was embarrassing for me, too. I'm just here to tell you. I, you know, all, all, all bets are off here. Uh, but um, uh, what became evident as I went through the speech and, uh, you, know, uh, you know, everything that uh, she did wrong to deserve this, this, that, and the other, um, he just told me how it was. <laughs> that this is the law in my house, that uh, if you're going to live in my house, then, you know, it's about sixth or seventh grade at that point. Uh, and so there were repercussions. Um, and after that, I had uh, quit the basketball team, and I wasn't allowed to go on the school trip that year. Uh, yeah, I mean, that cuts to the heart of a kid. Uh, yeah, uh, but those were the consequences. And so as uh, my dad is driving me up to the school to turn in my basketball uniform, I, you can see, and the crocodile tears, oh, they were there. Um, and I'll never forget, my dad looks over at me and says, son, I forgive you. There's one thing that was pretty evident by that point is that I was wrong. He didn't let me wallow in it, he, not for too long anyway. He, he simply said, I forgive you. Uh, and the thing that really sticks is I didn't ask for it. It was because I was his son, and yes, there were consequences, but um, it was clear that this was absolutely 100% undeserved forgiveness. It was grace. If we read about nothing in the gospel lesson today, it is that it is about grace. Uh, and lest we think that we deserve grace, I mean, that's kind of darn backwards, isn't it? That the reason it is grace is because it is not deserved. Uh, so, can we see ourselves maybe as, um, you know, we're the good guys, right? We're, we're the ones who are, we're the good Lutherans, right? We're the ones who are here on Sundays. We're, if anybody deserves it, it's us, you know? We're the good ones, we're, we're the ones gathering, and, and that's not how grace works, actually. We, uh, yeah, I know it kind of stinks, Francis, but that's the way God says it, is that um, uh, we are here because we don't deserve it. Uh, we didn't go to God and ask for it. He came to us and gave his forgiveness through his son. Uh, so we see in the gospel lesson that Jesus is seeking to give forgiveness to the lost. Parentheses, the undeserving. And we are called to give that forgiveness to the lost parentheses, undeserving. So there's the message for today, in case you missed it. Um, the gospel connection is, uh, you know, that Jesus is, is, is preaching about grace here, about how gracious the Father is and who uh, and what kind of people he's looking for. Uh, if Jesus could have an office uh, and there would be a sign on his office for this particular gospel lesson. If you look back in Luke 14 and then 15, uh, the sign on Jesus' door would say, Jesus, Son of God, Complaints Department. <laughs> it would. Uh, in chapter 14, uh, Jesus is there, and he, uh, it, you know, he's, invited, he, he's invited to teach in the synagogues, and there's someone there that has uh, dropsy. I haven't looked up what that is, actually. But you know, they're all looking at him, and is it, is it lawful to heal on the Sabbath? And so he does it and uh, explains it, and they're, they're complaining about it. Aren't there six other days when you could do this? And he says, well, on the, on the Sabbath, wouldn't you let your ox out to water and rest themselves? Wouldn't any, any of you do that? 
And they were left, so they were left in their complaining, speechless. And uh, lo and behold, chapter 15 comes along, and the scribes and the Pharisees are knocking on the complaints department door again. Uh, he, I mean, they're pointing at Jesus, saying, "Look at this guy! He's eating with those sinners and uh, everybody else." Uh, and parentheses, the undeserving, the unclean. I mean, it is obvious that these people are sinners. I mean, they're tax collectors. They're they're working for the enemy. They're they're lepers. They're unclean people. I mean, uh, the undeserving. Really. He is, it says it in the Greek, uh, the Pharisees, comes out of their mouth. They write it down uh, in, in this, and it says uh, he's, he's welcoming them. And, and the context there, it's a little bit deeper. He is actually waiting for them. It's like he's waiting with bated breath for these unclean people, undeserving people. Jesus is waiting, just Oh, here they are. Welcome my, my ragged sheep. And these are the ones I'm looking for. They know they're sick and in need of a physician. And the Pharisees and scribes are complaining about that. So, uh, you know, much like with my father, uh, uh, as I faced him, there was, maybe you guys have had, maybe it's just me, I won't speak for you, a teaching moment. I'm just saying, this is teaching moment. So when one of my kids, any one of my five kids says anything, um, that um, gets my hackles up a little bit. Uh, you name the comment uh, any teenager makes. And, um, you know, it doesn't sound exactly like gospel truth. And I said, well, there is another point of view. There, there, there's this teaching moment. And so you notice the pause as I read the gospel, correct? Okay. Why is that? Did anybody read ahead? Okay, you know there's two parables before this, right? The, par- the, parable, the two parables before that are the, lo- the, the parable of the lost sheep and the parable of the lost coin. So the teaching moment for Jesus and the scribes and the Pharisees and the disciples and everybody that's gathered there is this, that Jesus is looking for the lost. Okay, and uh, let's just be clear who the lost are. You've heard someone say, say it, Pastor Phillips. You found Jesus? (laughs) I thought she'd be right on with that. But no, no, she lost it. When someone says to her, uh, I found Jesus, you say. I didn't know he was lost. You didn't know he's like, yes. (laughs) That is, uh, we are the lost ones. We are the lost sheep, and we are the coin. And it is clear that God is looking for us, for the sinners, uh, for the ones who are wasting their lives away outside of his will. And I'll give 55 points to anybody but the pastor here who has ever, and my wife, I'm sorry, you knew, we talked about it earlier. Does anybody know what the word prodigal means? I mean, you've used it over and over, the the prodigal son. Wasteful. One who is wasting his life away, doing things with the father's money that are outside of the father's purpose and outside of his will. He is the wasteful son. He is, another meaning for it is lavish. Uh, uh, he's spending lavishly, he's wasting his life away. But we can actually use the word prodigal to describe the son and the father, and I will get to that in just a little bit. Uh, the point is that um, this is for the father to forgive this son, I mean, to the other son, to, uh, to us. And he squandered everything, he scattered everything, he was using it according to his plan, not according to the father's plan. Um, it was a waste of time. To forgive this person. He's lost and he's undeserving. His sin is obvious. I mean, not like us, right? I mean, let's just say it. We look good right now. I mean, you got some nice robes on. You guys are dressed pretty good for a Sunday morning. But I hate to tell you, I'm not going to speak for you. But under this robe, there might be a collar. But under that collar is a heart that's in bondage to sin and can't free itself. It doesn't look so good. Underneath this is someone who's undeserving of, of anything from God. That's, 
That's what we are. We are uh, sinners in bondage to sin and cannot free ourselves. Uh, so we see from the younger son that he takes the money, takes his property, uh, his father's property, and uh, goes out uh, and, you know, uh, according to his plan, uh, according to uh, what he thinks is right and wrong, what, uh, the way he wants to live. And that's a picture of us as uh, ones that are in bondage to sin. Because it does that, it separates us from God and from one another. Uh, so just to kind of go off of this uh, undeserving thing, this, this prodigal, this wasteful son, the one that is uh, using the resources outside of the father's will. Um, let's go back to just when sin started. I mean, you know the story. I don't have to sit here and recite Genesis 3. But just to get an idea of the grace of God and how we, we, we really do nothing to deserve it. I, I just I printed out Genesis 3 here. And when, when the fall happened, so the sound of God is coming in the garden, and the man and his wife did what? Repent? They said, I'm sorry, God. I, they they, they you know, tried to make up for it. No, what did they do? They hid themselves. That doesn't sound like something that deserves forgiveness. And then over in verse 12, um, so the man said, um, the woman that you gave to me. I mean, the pointing match is starting here. This does not look like repentance. I'm just here to tell you. Uh, you the one you gave me, uh, uh, she gave me the fruit of the tree, and I ate. I just don't want something. You know, I don't know what I was doing, God. And then the woman said, oh, it was a serpent that did it. More pointing? Okay. This does not sound like repentance or confession at any other point in time. Um, and then the story goes on. Uh, the consequences come. And then God does this. No repentance, no deserving, nothing. He does. And the Lord God, may, you remember the fig leaves that they were, you know, clothed themselves? They, do it yourself. Right? This does not, yeah, this does not sound like repentance that leads to forgiveness. But the Lord made for Adam and his wife garments of skin and clothed them. This is action by God. Okay, When you clothe someone, when you give someone your garment in the Old Testament, it's a sign of inheritance. That, that he is still claiming them as his own, as separated as they just made themselves from him. His grace is there. There is punishment. The wages of sin is death, but the free gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus. Undeserved, but gracious and merciful. As the Psalms would say, slow to anger and abounding in steadfast love. That's how God works. It's been like that from the beginning. So Jesus is just waiting and looking forward for these sinners to come from him, to, to welcome them. Because Jesus is seeking to give forgiveness to the lost. And we are called to give that forgiveness also to the lost. So God is seeking us. He's not making us come here, is he? This isn't a have to today, is it? It's a get to. But you see, the father did not make the son. He didn't say, you know, son, that's probably not a great idea. You know, this, that. He, he just lets him go. God doesn't make us into robots. He, he's given us this free will that uh, he doesn't want the yes if we don't have the option to say no. This is that glorifies God. That when you got the option to say no, and through his word you see his grace and mercy, and you turn to him based on that word. That glorifies God. Because that's his work in you and in me. That, that work of him seeking us through his word. So this younger son, uh, the one that uh, maybe we can all identify with a little bit. Um, it, you know, this is marginal reading. But it, it, you know, in parentheses, when he says, give me my share of the inheritance, you know what he's saying? Drop dead, dad. I'm just saying. When you, anybody ever inherited anything? Okay, I, I think a couple of us have. Um, th there's a couple things that happen and don't happen when you inherit something. What do we do if we inherit something? What do we do to get that inheritance? Zippo. Nothing. We get nothing for that. Or we do nothing for that. 
Um, on the other hand, the loved one that has left us with it, what have they done? Died, yeah. <laughs> so <laughs> essentially that's what the younger son is saying. Uh, give me what's mine. I expect it. I, I, I want to use it for my own purposes. And do we sometimes see grace that way? That it is something that we've earned. That we are entitled to God's grace because we are the good guys. Um, no, we've actually inherited this grace. The work belonged to God. The work belonged to Christ on the cross. When the angels cried, that was his work, not ours. The inheritance is not earned. It is received. You, you, you received that, didn't you? My body given for you. My blood shed. It was something that we receive out of God's pure grace and his mercy. Grace that is earned is, uh, let's just say it, it's works righteousness. Earning it on our own. Claiming our independence from God. Uh, looking at ourselves, looking in the mirror and saying, you know, I'm looking pretty good, God. I've done some pretty good things this week. Yeah, you owe it to me. Uh, we can't put God in the box. Not how it works. God is seeking to give forgiveness to the lost. God is seeking to give forgiveness to the undeserved. And then we are called to go give that forgiveness to the lost and undeserved as well. So there's a couple of plans going on here. There is uh, the son's plan, and then there is, uh, there's plan A, B, and C. Really, there is. Uh, plan A, take dad's stuff before he's dead. Go spend it up. Have a good time. Okay, that doesn't work. Then we're going to go do what? Uh, oh, we'll get a job here and, and make a little money. Famine, it'll feed us. Uh, no, plan B doesn't work. And finally, finally, we get to plan C. The, you know, the, the grace plan, <laughs> that undeserved plan. That, that's the thing uh, that we, we work hard at this sin stuff, don't we? we? We work hard at sin, and we really make it look good. We work hard at sin. We work harder at covering it up. We look, and we, we get really, really good at it. We get good at wasting away our living the way the younger son does. I mean, uh, that's what God wants, right? He wants for us to be happy. No, actually, our call is to be faithful. Our call is to use all that he has given us. Uh, his, we can actually say, it is his time, these are his talents, and these are his possessions that we get to use, and those are signs of his what love? Gracious love. That undeserved love that comes from God. So if we learn nothing from the prodigal son, the wasteful son, is that our plans are not equal to God's plan. That uh, forgiveness is undeserved because uh, when, when sin comes into our, when, when we are in bondage to sin, um, we actually ignore God's will. I, I saw a, 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 a post, that, maybe Facebook does tell us a little bit, but there was a really good post on, on a, uh, I, I forget what the, what the page was, um, but sin happens when God's will doesn't satisfy us. When we are not filled up by serving him, when it when it just when when sacrifice just isn't fun anymore, that's that's when sin happens. When we want to have it our way. So what's the turning point in all this? It is when the prodigal son, the wasteful son, realizes something. He realizes that he is finally in need. That, that's, that's, what, <laughs> it's like my wife yesterday, we're, we're at Universal Studios yesterday, and is, I, I'm, I'm going to share, just, she, this ride called The Mummy, <laughs> okay, she, she, we're in line, and I can see the fear in her eyes, and, and I'm right there with her, and, honey, I will be right here with you, and, 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 and so we get on, and, and she goes through it, and, and she gets off, and we're, and she just looks at me and goes, is that all there was? <laughs> well, when, when, when the sun, is this all there is? For me to go out on my own and 
I'm feeding swine. I'm a Jewish people feeding pigs. That's not kosher. (laughs) That's as low as you can go. That's bottom of the barrel of the bottom of the barrel of a Jewish man. Is this all there is in life? But there is that father of mine who I know, who I know is gracious even to his hired servants. I'm going to go ask to be like them. I'm not even going to ask to be a hired servant. I'm going to ask to be like them. Treat me. No, I've lost my sonship. I know that. I know I've said, I know I am wrong. I mean, I can see myself with my car and the, with my dad in the car going, I'm going to turn in my basketball uniform. I, I didn't deserve that. But I'm going to go to my father because of the way that he treats people. And, and I know his graciousness. I know that I don't deserve it. So when, we, when he sees that need, he says that this, all there is to this life, he, he turns. Something's happened in his heart. Is this all there is? No, actually, there's more. As a father that can and does forgive us more than we could even fathom. Desperate waiting with bated breath for Lent to come around for us to ask forgiveness. For it to, did you, you notice the thing about the confession in, in here? That it, was, it came after he was cut to the heart. That, that the confession was the fruit of repentance. That the confession didn't just come from here and here, it started here. And so that right when he was, I'm going to get up and go to my father. And you see in the text, he didn't waste any time. He just got up and went. If there's anything about a Nike commercial that we can (laughs) learn from, just do it. Is When you are cut to the heart, uh, God will carry you through in that repentance and that that confession and that changed life. The new life that we are offered is the one that is in Christ. That forgiving, that life that is forgiven and calls us to give forgiveness. Now, can we just say to forgive when someone has wronged you is just downright inhuman. It is downright unnatural. Right? For someone to slap us in the face, to withhold fruit, to do whatever they, I mean, you name the people in your life that have sinned against you, to forgive them is undeserved, and we cannot do that on our own. But Jesus says, uh, Paul actually says, inspired by the Holy Spirit, that we now re- don't regard Christ from a human point of view. We regard, actually, as disciples of Christ, no one from a human point of view. So that forgiveness that you or I are called, don't look inside yourself for it like all the movies tell you. Look to Christ. Look at him. We represent him in the world. We are ambassadors for Christ. There's where you learn how to forgive, at the foot of the cross, where grace and mercy are poured out undeservedly. You want to forgive, stop thinking like a human. Renew your mind, Paul says, and offer your life as now a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable to God, which is your spiritual worship. And that's not just here on Sunday, that's in the world, where we go with those time, talent, treasures, and forgive, uh, we got to look at him. We can have our plan, we have plan A, plan B, but there's that plan of God. In grace and in mercy, he has forgiven us, and when our lives are spent, that's what the, the son did, he spent it all. When our lives are spent, he will be there to hold us, be there to provide us that next breath that we can't provide on our own. God is seeking to forgive the lost. And we are called to go out and give that forgiveness to the lost as well. And as for the lesson for the older son as well, I wish there was a whole other time for a whole other sermon, but there's not. Um, There is uh, the fact that he didn't deserve it either. As much as he thought his works uh, got him what he deserved, it was still by grace anyway. It was by grace from beginning to end. 
That's always been yours, my son, because why? Because you're with me. As Christ is with it, with us, all that the Father, all that forgiveness that we can't find on our own, that's there with him. And greater is he who is in you than he who is in the world. So I pray blessings on your ministry this week, my ministry this week. You're having a hard time with that grace that you know we're called to give. Look at Jesus. Don't look at your pastors. Don't look at other people around. Look at Jesus. The one who gave graciously and undeservedly to you and to me. I pray that blessing for us all in Jesus' name. Amen. Please take a few moments to meditate on the word and the will of God.